Hello, welcome to this video. I'm Amy and I'm going to be going over some common A-level biology exam mistakes that you need to avoid making once exams start in May or June. So all of the information in this video is a compilation of feedback from examiners across exam boards from the 2019 exam papers. To be honest, I also had a look at some of the other years um, and made sure to look at all exam boards and the feedback from examiners was very similar across all of them. So apart from errors in knowledge of the spec, which can be rectified by just doing plenty of revision beforehand, um, these are some common errors in the way that students approached questions that I think if you know about them now, you hopefully won't make them in your actual exam. So something I noticed from the examiner's reports were comments on simple maths errors. Now this is really frustrating because maths are a great place to pick up as many marks as you can. Remember that the standard of the maths in A-level science papers will be higher GCSE level, um, so make sure that once you finish your GCSEs or while you're revising for your A-levels, you have a handle on higher level maths. In particular, things like calculating uncertainties, um, interpreting graphs, and making sure that you're answering questions to the correct number of significant figures, which will be provided in the question. Interpreting graphs is one that you might want to spend a little bit of time on because they come up quite a lot in A-level biology. Have a look at the axis units, the axis labels, and also look at the shape of the relationship between the X and Y axis. Have you got any thoughts on why X responds to Y in the way it does? What's the biological significance? Make sure that you read all all of the information that the exam question is giving you about the graph um, and if you feel like you need to make some notes next to the graph to make your own observations on what's going on. So something that examiners emphasised was the importance of referring to figures and graphs in your answers. So if an exam question makes a reference to a figure or a graph within the question that it's asking you to answer, make sure that in your response you also talk about that figure or graph. This is your opportunity to demonstrate an insight into what that shows. So make sure that you're really showing that off so that you can satisfy all of the marks available. Other things that came up under math skills were understanding probability, so make sure that you're able to get a good handle on that, selecting statistical tests and identifying null hypotheses, converting units and checking that you're writing answers in the correct units, um, and understanding an application of logarithmic scales. If you aren't sure why you use a certain test or a certain type of graph to show a certain type of data, then make sure you find this out before you sit your exam. Like I said, the level will be higher GCSE maths, so you can use your notes from GCSEs or just have a look online for some GCSE maths pass papers to polish up your understanding if needed. Okay, so another thing that was so frustrating to read about in examiner's reports was incorrect use of terminology. So some examples of things that came up um, a few times Heat is released, not produced. So when you're talking about the release of energy from chemical reactions or from any kind of biological process, don't say that energy is produced, it's released. Another thing to think about is knowing the difference between terms that sound similar or could describe similar things. So some common ones to look out for, magnification versus resolution, accuracy versus validity versus precision um, versus reliability. Those are all different terms, so make sure that you know each of them individually, they're not interchangeable. Another thing that you need to check yourself on is using the term amount. Never use the term amount when referring to a quantity. You want to use volume or mass. Remember, you need to be scientific in the way that you talk about things in your exam paper. Make sure you're clear on the words that you're using when referring to the question and when answering the question. Um, it's great to use scientific terms, and if you use them correctly, then you're going to reap the rewards. But if you use them incorrectly or use them in a confused manner, you could actually negate marks that you will have gained earlier on in the question. I'm not sure if it needs saying, but avoid throwing in scientific terms just to try and save your answer. So if you think that a term would sound good in the response, but you're not sure exactly whether it's the correct word to use, then don't use it. It was quite interesting to see that students lacked on some practical knowledge and knowledge of experimental design for valid results. Your practical knowledge is so important because it gives you a fundamental understanding of how scientists answer key biological questions through experiments. Make sure that you use the practical handbook and that you understand why you're using certain methodologies, certain pieces of equipment to answer the questions that you're looking to answer. You also need to have a think about the kinds of data that your experiment will produce and then how those data can be interpreted and analysed to show a result. When you see an exam question that talks about an 
experimental procedure, take time to really read through the procedure and consider why each of the stages were used. Also have a look out for potential errors because sometimes exam questions want you to identify problems with certain methodologies. So make sure that all of these questions, you're reading through them and analyzing them as if they could be wrong. Like mathematical competency, practical competency is so important. Um, if you want to learn a bit more about these key skills in science and check out this playlist just up here, it has everything you need to know. Another mistake that students seem to be making is rote learning your definitions of key terms. Make sure that you are concise in your responses to exam questions and that you demonstrate an understanding of your subject material. If you've just memorized a key term and then write out what you've memorized in the exam paper, the examiner knows straight away. They have the mark scheme, they know the specification, they know when you've just repeated something that you read in a textbook. You need to be able to write about concepts within any context, and this is particularly important if you're doing OCR, because unfamiliar contexts get thrown in quite a lot to A-level biology OCR exams. So you need to be able to know your course content enough so that you could apply it to another situation that you haven't seen before. And if this sounds scary, trust me, it isn't, it just takes practice. Again, we have a video about this that you can check out just up here. So another note that I've made when I was looking at these examiner's reports was the consistent feedback that students weren't giving balanced and complete reasoning when they responded to longer exam questions. Often in A-level biology, you will be asked to evaluate something or describe something, and this requires you to show maybe two sides of an argument or the pros and cons of certain processes. For example, if you're asked to evaluate gene therapy as a treatment for sickle cell disease, give the positives of that therapy, but also the potential drawbacks. Make sure your ideas are fully formed as well and not just random sentences that drop off and then a new sentence is started that doesn't relate to the last one. And super important, don't repeat what the question has already written. Anything that the question has already provided obviously won't qualify as a mark, so don't take the time to write it out again. You need to spend all the time you have available to you writing out your own response so that you can get your marks. Simple recall of facts that you've read um, from your textbook or from your revision notes um, isn't enough to get you all of the marks that you need. So really develop that in-depth understanding. To make sure that you are writing a full exam response, you also want to pay attention to the command word. Examiners report that a failure to obey the command words is what's often limited marks. And finally, for this video, um, a note that came up in a few of the reports was poor handwriting confusing um, students' responses. If you've written in a way that the examiner can't read, even if you have written the correct thing, they can't give you the mark because they can't see um, your full response. Like I said, it doesn't seem to be a huge issue, but just something to keep in check. Give examiner's reports a read for yourself and um, to have a look at exactly what examiners are saying about each individual question. This is probably handy for looking at for your specific exam board because they highlight where common errors lie in subject knowledge, as well as common errors in exam approach. There are plenty to look through on your exam board website, so definitely give that a go before the exam season begins. If you're watching this video in February, March or April, um, then you might want to consider checking out the SNAP Revised Revision Seminars, which will be taking place to perfectly prepare you for your exams in May and June. These are led by expert tutors who will be going over the harder concepts within your A-level subject and helping you to practice your exam technique. These are great for rounding off your knowledge in the final run-up to exams. You also receive a seminar booklet, which contains loads of content to get you through the seminar, but also with topic test questions that you can take home to continue your revision and exam practice. Tickets are limited, so if you want to get one, head over to the website now. It's snapprovise.co.uk forward slash seminars. There are in-person tickets as well as live stream tickets. So whatever suits you, um, you can choose on the website. If you want some support with your A-level biology revision, then this playlist here is a great place to start. And if you haven't subscribed already to Snap Revise, then you can do that over here.